What's going on, guys? I'm back. I know. I know. I know. I haven't been doing any videos. I haven't been around. Excuse me for living my life, but I'm back. And we're going to start a special series on small unit tactics. It's going to be volume one, and it's going to be good. So let's get into it. I don't want to talk too much. I just want to jump into the information at hand. So small unit tactics, we're going to start with um, a formation called the line. And you guys who have served in the infantry will definitely know this. And you'll say, I know all this stuff, but for the guys who haven't, um, you probably don't, you may not, you may have seen it elsewhere, but I'm going to attempt to teach some of this stuff because I've been doing it for a little while and I'd like to really learn it more better. And uh, in order to learn it more better, I have to teach it. So that's learn one, do one, teach one, right? That's what I'm doing here. I'm going to attempt to teach this in order to drive it home a little more into myself. So we're starting with the file. Why do we move in a file? Why do we move where everyone's standing behind each other like this? Well, Will, wouldn't I shoot my friend in the back if I had to get into a firefight? Yes, you absolutely would. You would never engage the enemy like this. So, damn it. So if the enemy starts shooting at us like that, let's say we run into an ambush, right? And Oh, can, can you guys fucking see this shit? Let me move it closer. There we go. That's much better. So let's say that we run into an ambush and the enemy start shooting at us from over here. Let's say maybe there's a, a big, uh, I don't know, a bunch of bushes here. Or even maybe like a hill or whatever, right? And we, uh, we didn't see them, but now they start shooting at us. Well, it's... Hello? It's, it's, it's nice that we're in a file because, number one, they don't exactly know how many of us there are. We travel this way. One of the reasons we travel this way is because it's discreet. It's a lower profile, right? Whereas if we were all already online, and we'll get to this, but this is online. If we were already in a big, you know, open line like this, they could see all of us more easier. So we travel like this, not only because it's easy, but also because it is a little bit of a lower profile. Let me move the camera back here so I'm not just a talking head. Perfect. All right, so we move here because of low profile, also because of ease of movement. So if we're walking through the woods, and you got trees all around us, right? Um, especially at night, it's a lot easier to move like this because the man behind him, especially when it's dark, you know, nods, no nods, night vision, whatever, but especially if you're not, you know, if you don't have the luxury of everyone having nods, what you do is this guy will grab onto the back of this guy's gear and this guy will grab onto the back of this guy's gear. And even if you do have nods, it's not a bad idea sometimes to do that anyway. So it makes it a lot easier moving through you know, the woods or whatever. Um, would we ever move like this, like maybe in an alleyway or like a street, right? Like in fucking the streets of Baghdad. I don't know, I wasn't in the streets of Baghdad, but I can imagine that there's a time and a place where you'd want to move like that in narrow little streets. You can't all be online, right? And again, I'm not an expert in Mount, Mount M-O-U-T, you know, urban, urban combative shit. That's not my forte. Uh, some guys who have been in, you know, the, uh, freaking in the sandbox could probably tell me better, but I'm telling you like as far as open environments, the stuff that I'm used to, moving in a line like this is kind of the norm. Um, you know, just moving from one objective to the other or moving on to your objective, you want to travel in a line. Again, you'll also hear it called like the ranger file. Now, let's just say that somebody starts shooting at us, right? We got contact, contact front, 50 meters, all right? So we're going to, instead of trying to just like come here and do this and like shoot all over each other's shoulders, that's a terrible idea. Why? Because in a firefight, it's a highly fluid situation and you're dodging and and you're getting all excited and you're moving all over the place and you're not looking over your shoulder every two seconds like you know you really should um, to see where your buddy's shooting. So instead of trying to like shoot over each other, you always, always will get online. This is what that's called. Not getting online, fucking if you're old enough to remember what that even means, but getting online like this. This way, we all have a clear sector of fire. Now, we're online and we're able to effectively throw lead down range. And we all have our sector of fire, right? Sector of fire effectively means that from here to here, 
this is where I know I'm shooting. I'm not gonna try to shoot over here. Why? Because my buddy can shoot over here for me. I'm not gonna try to shoot over here unless the enemy starts coming around and flanking us. I'm gonna concentrate on what's in front of me from, from here, roughly, to here, all right? That's all I'm worried about. There's enough going on in a firefight as it is. Um, and we will be worried about more than just what's going on from here to here. But to make everything simpler, we want to make sure, all right, I've got my buddy to my left. Hopefully I've got a buddy to my right as well. All I have to fucking focus on is from over here to over here. You know, roughly from shoulder to shoulder, maybe a little bit longer than that, a little bit wider than that. That's my sector of fire. It's going to make things a lot simpler for me. He's going to worry about his sector. He's going to worry about his sector. They're going to overlap. All right. And this will be ha handy to know when we start talking about ambushes and things like that and even countering ambushes. But suffice to say, this is the fucking basics of the basics. We go from all online, I'm sorry, all in a file, right? All in a row. We got our ducks all in a row. We're traveling, right? We're going through the woods or through a narrow place or something like that. And we want to make sure that our signature is fairly low and maybe, you know, like you ever heard, especially in wintertime, right? Like you guys ever fucking watch Star Wars? Sand people always uh, travel single file to avoid uh, have, having their numbers be counted, right? Well, in the snow, same thing, you know, as much as you can, you're going to travel in a file like that to avoid um, having your numbers fucking be counted in a muddy environment. So there's a lot of reasons why we want to travel in a file and we don't always do that. But a lot of the times you will find yourself even just naturally ending up kind of in this formation here. But as soon as you get contact, contact front, 50 meters, online, get online, boom. This guy comes here, this guy goes here, this guy goes here. And again, when you're doing this, it's really important to practice, 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 practice. Because if you don't, and you just attempt to do it in the middle of a fucking firefight, things are gonna go hectic. And this guy might end up over here. And this guy might end up down here. And this guy fucking might run into this guy. And then he might shoot him in the shoulder. And then, so things happen. It's a very dynamic situation. Um, I've never been in like a live firefight with bullets coming at me, but I've been in enough now with like the Miles gear or with sim rounds um, that I'm starting to get the hang of how chaotic it really can be. It's very, very chaotic. So we really want to make sure that we rehearse all this stuff. This is going to be just, Lesson one on how to fight from a ranger file. The contact front, okay? We get online. We all get in a straight line, in a straight row, all right, over here. That way we can concentrate all our fire at the enemy up here. Enemy's firing at us here, we want to fire back at them there. Now, ultimately, we're going to maneuver on this enemy. We can't just stay where we are here. But that's going to be for the next lesson. Let's discuss what happens if we're traveling in a file. One, two, three, four. We got four dudes with us, the A team. What happens if instead of taking contact from the front, we start taking contact from the left-hand side? We didn't see these guys and they were smart enough that they saw our file. Maybe they maneuvered, or maybe they were just always here. Maybe it's a deliberate ambush. Uh, maybe it's a hasty ambush. So a hasty ambush would be, maybe they were hanging out over here smoking and joking, and they see, they see the point man coming up, and, or they get some intelligence that there's gonna be a patrol coming this way. Or they have, whatever happens, right? They know that we're coming. Um, and they've got a little bit of advance notice, 20 minutes, something like that. They decide to maneuver from all the way up here and they decide, fuck that, we know the direction of travel these guys are gonna take. Let's go and flank them and hit them from the side. That way we don't catch them when they're in the file, right? We don't catch their low profile here. We don't have to worry about trying to figure out how many there are. We're gonna let them come right up on us and as soon as there is a straight line of them, they're gonna be ducks in a fucking row and they're gonna go ahead and get us from the side. So what happens, we're traveling here, Point man comes up, everything's good. Second man's now coming up, third man. And then all of a sudden, bang, 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 bang. Boop, 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 boop. Fireworks from the fucking bushes, right? Lights, light, lights up, crazy and shit, right? Um, contact left, contact left. 25 meters in the bushes, in the tree line. 
All right, that's what we're going to be calling out. We're going to call out where it's coming from and roughly how far away we think it is and any landmarks that we can give. Contact left 25 meters in the tree line, right? So we know, everybody knows that to our left-hand side, we need to orient this way, 25 meters right over there in the tree line, not behind a hill, not up on the military crest of the hill, like in the fucking tree line right there. That's where we need to aim, all right? So same thing, instead of having to worry now about maneuvering too much, all we're gonna do is orient on that threat. All we're gonna do is, oh shit, there it is, okay? And we're all gonna face left, we're gonna get, we're already online, we're gonna get in the fight, all right? The time for maneuvering right now, since we're, oh shit, now it's kind of an ambush type situation, all we need to be thinking about doing now is overlap, overlapping our sectors of fire and putting fucking lead down range. It's the same principle as hand-to-hand -hand combat. If you were to get clocked in the head from the side of the bar, what would you do? Would you try to gain distance? Um, some people might, but the more effective thing to do would be to turn and start fucking wailing punches and hope that whoever hit you, you're connecting to. Uh, it doesn't matter because you're going to connect on somebody and they're going to get the fucking point. Like, back off. This guy's not to be fucked with. Well, same here, right? We don't know how many dudes are in the fucking tree line. We have no way of knowing this. All we know is that we need to get fucking violence of action out and fucking have our presence be known. Like, the time for sneaking around is over. They've already fucking ambushed us. They're shooting at us. We need to fucking turn around, face them. And again, why would we want to, like, face them with our whole body? Well... A lot of the times, plates, right? We got armor on. I mean, a, a lot of the times these days, if you're fucking, if you're out sneaking around, I hope you probably have some armor on. Now, I realize, like, not everybody, some people go slick, some people go light, they don't wear a lot of armor, but whatever. Even if you don't, the rounds will still penetrate you this way instead of penetrating you this way. You want that so that, you know, if they penetrate you this way, it's got to fucking, it's going to fuck up all your organs. If they penetrate you this way, you've got less of a chance of, of you know, getting all of your organs shot up. So we always face them and then we fucking, bah, 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 bah. we start fucking laying them out. we we'll start spraying lead, aim in that general fucking direction and just start fucking hosing them down with lead. All right, now we're not gonna stay standing up. We're not gonna stay like just facing them like this. We're gonna maneuver a bit. Um, IMTs, individual maneuvers. But we, we really, we need to just, first of all and foremost, Turn, face them, and start fucking hosing them with lead. And again, remember, sectors of fire. I don't need to be fucking going all the way over here and sweeping all the way. I need to be focusing on roughly from shoulder to shoulder, maybe a little bit wider. This is where I'm going to shoot. Hopefully, my buddy to the left of me and the right of me is still alive or still in the fight, and they're going to be doing the same thing. Our sectors of fire are going to overlap. This guy's shooting here, this guy's shooting here, this guy's shooting here, this guy's shooting here, right? And when they turn, this is a big sector of fire now. You've got all of this area covered. All of the enemy is now covered. And uh, whoever hasn't gone down yet is still spraying, right? So this is the basics of it. It's the same thing if you get hit on the right, right? So we're all traveling. I'll go through this one real quick just to reinforce the point. I dropped my marker. Hold on. Shit. All right. So we're traveling in our ranger file. All right. Shit. Contact right. 25 meters up in the tree line. Contact right. 25 meters in the tree line. We all now are going to face to the right, orient on that threat, start fucking spraying them down with lead. All right. That's the only thing we're going to be focusing on right now. Just... Boom, at that exact moment, pa, 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 pa. contact right, contact right. And we're all gonna scream, contact right, all right? Psychologically reinforced, not contact left, not contact front, not contact rear, which we'll talk about in a second. Contact right, 25 meters in the tree line, start spraying them down, all right? And then after that, we're gonna talk about what exactly we wanna do with that point. But before we get there, let's talk about what happens if we get hit in the rear? What happens, maybe the enemy, for whatever reason, has come up behind us. Now, this guy, the rear dude, all right, he should, ideally, every hmm, 10, 12 steps, something like that, glance over his shoulder. Now, you'll hear, you'll see, like, in the movies where the guy, you know, he turns all around like this. Maybe, you know, sometimes it's the guy with, like, the M60 or 
the saw or whatever, and he turns right, walks like this, right? And then he turns back. All right, but that's wasting a lot of energy. Um, a lot of the times, what in, in reality, once you get doing patrols, 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 you get very tired, especially if you're, you know, you're on a patrol cycle where you're resting for two hours and then you go back out on another patrol, you come in, you rest for another two hours, you're back out, like, that's pretty typical, right? So it, you get so fucking worn down that like you're not gonna, you're just not gonna wanna do this and turn all the way around. So what a lot of the times the rear man will do is he will just kinda every, again, roughly 10, 12, 15 steps, he'll just turn over his shoulder and look. And what happens now if he was for whatever reason sleeping on the job? He's been up for 24 hours, whatever his boots are fucking wet like it's been pissing rain on him it's cold like he's like fuck i've been on patrol for an hour i know i've got another hour at least before i can get back to the patrol base and like at least get like to shut my eyes or like i'm fucking hungry like he's fucking he's going through it right and he just he's sleeping he forgets boom all of a sudden contact rear contact rear what happens now right we're all getting shot up and getting shot at from the rear well, nothing really changes from contact front. We're all going to get online. Unfortunately, when we have to orient behind us, it causes a little more chaos. So this particular drill or this particular movement is gonna take a little more practice because what tends to happen is contact rear, oh fuck, like, oh shit, now I have to turn around. It just, it, it's psychologically, kind of messes with you a bit. So what tends to happen is you'll get discombobulated and you'll wind up with guys like this. And this is a big problem because why? Well, we don't have overlapping sectors of fire. Look at this. This man is getting fucking shot up. He's getting shot up by his own dude here, right? And it's not like his own dude is a bad shot necessarily, maybe, but more than likely it's just, oh fuck, I'm getting shot at. I'm going to pop, 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 pop. Oh fuck, my dude happened to be right in front of me when I started raising my fucking weapon and just for my own life's sake, like trying to suppress the enemy. You know, my own dude literally ran in front of me and I, there was nothing I could do. I just laced him out, blue on blue. That's a big fucking issue. So it takes practice doing these movements. But ideally, ideally, and this is why we practice, we want to do the same type of thing, all get online. And again, that takes practice, and especially for these two dudes down here, like this dude to get online with this dude, that's fine. And again, we'll go through more advanced movements. We can actually just come here and do something like this, and then these guys will bound forth. That's for a second video here, we'll talk about that. But ideally what's gonna happen is, again, contact rear, contact rear, 50 meters, you know, in the, in the bushes you know, over by that red oak tree, whatever, right? So we all are now gonna get online. And again, all of our sectors of fire, ideally, are going to overlap, and we're gonna start shooting bullets down at these bad guys. After that happens, we're gonna go into next, on the next video, well, what do we do after that? What do we do after we orient on that threat we're all online, our sectors of fire are now overlapping, we're throwing lead down at the enemy, okay? We go into all of our like tactical stuff, you know, like mag changes and mag retention and oh, I, lo oh, I love it. <laughs> so we're all gonna be, you know, doing all that stuff. Uh, we're gonna be shooting, moving, communicating. Well, what happens next, right? We're all shooting, now we have to move, all right? We're all communicating, but we have to add in movement. We can't all stay here. Because why? Bullets are flying at us just like they're flying at them. And it's a bad situation to be in because the enemy knows now we're all just here. Maybe we're trying to take cover. Maybe there's some, uh, you know, more than likely, whether you practice this or not, you're going to end up getting behind some trees and, you know, getting on the ground, taking cover. Well, in the next video, part two, part deuce, we're going to be talking about um, our individual maneuvers as far as what do guys want to start doing now that we've started putting uh, bullets down range? How do we survive through this? How do we survive through this ambush? We'll talk all about it in part two. But I, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say except we'll see you mother flowers in part two.